Hey, this is Peter from Wham Bam, and today I want to talk about printing PETG and more specifically PETG on the Wham Bam PEX surface. So PETG, uh, first off, is a very cool material. It's, it's real tough and robust. It has a little bit more flexibility than it does brittleness to it. It'll resist higher temps than uh, PLA. So it's a pretty good technological material, but it does have a lot of difficulties when it comes to printing on PEX and PEI. Uh, and the reason why is it has a very similar molecular structure to PEX and PEI, meaning it wants to fuse to the plate. Um, there are six main factors which do contribute to that fusing and we're going to go over those today and talk about what we can do to mitigate it and hopefully get you printing without any problems on your build surface. Uh, the first three factors all kind of work together. Um, one of the most problematic factors is if your nozzle is too close to your bed on the first layer. Uh, we know that for PLA printing, you really want to squish that first layer down and have a very flat topped uh, first layer, almost half the height of your bead of filament. For PETG, it really sticks with barely any contact on the surface. You barely want to push that top down. As a matter of fact, PETG does not like to be dragged. If you drag a lot the nozzle in PETG, you're going to get a lot of stringing and hairs, and you can kind of see it on this model. And what happens is that stringing then eventually builds up as clumps on your nozzle and then drops onto your part and gives you these zits and blobs that can also be knocked over by the nozzle later on in the print. So we want to try to avoid that. We want to try to make sure we have a high enough first layer. That way we're not squishing down into the plate too much. The second factor is the nozzle temp. Almost every PETG, if you look at the, the spools, they'll tell you the suggested um, hot end temperatures. And almost every one of them tells you a range are about 240 or 230 to 260. We find that the 245 range is really ideal. And you could look at a whole bunch of different manufacturers. They're all right around the same range. 245 is a great range. It allows your layers of PETG, one layer between to another, to bond to itself and give you a really strong integral part that's not going to fracture or split at the seam lines. Um, if you go too hot, we're going to have a problem with excessive stringing and also we're going to have a problem with ex excessive shrinkage, which we'll talk about a little later. Um, if you go too cold, you might not have the right amount of flow and the layers might not stick together. So 245 is a great temperature. One of the problems comes from the new machines which are providing uh, slicer settings to try to increase speed, uh, such as the Bamboo, the Anchor Make, some of the other. New printers, they're coming with slicers that are pushing the speed to a limit. And in order to do it, they're trying to melt that filament faster. So in their slicer, they have it set for PETG to go up to 280 degrees or 270 degrees, um, well outside of the manufacturer's recommended printing temperatures. As a matter of fact, they do it to be able to melt real fast and hopefully it doesn't stay in the nozzle at any one time like that. That temperature, however, combined with too close of a nozzle, will be melting the PTG onto your PEX and fusing them together and creating a problem. So we have to take some precautions or be careful and set your slicer to be only 250 degrees maximum. The last of the first three is your bed temp. Bed temps for our PEX, we recommend for almost every machine, like the Enders 3s, the Open machines, 70 degrees is just perfect. It gives you really great adhesion, and when it's cool, it'll usually pop right off. Um, with a bamboo or an enclosed printer that you're printing a hot or hot end, you can lower your, your bed temp. We can go down to 55 degrees and still get nice grip and nice release. One of the things to notice is out of those three elements, it's usually not a single one which causes too much grip, but the combination. It's either too close of a first layer, layer height and too high of a hot end nozzle temp. 
or it's too high of a hot end and too high of a bed. When you have any two of those which are off, you're really most likely going to create bonding between the PETG and our PEX and possibly damage the PEX sheet. Some other factors to really consider is never ever pry or pull your part off of the build plate after it's done and definitely do not do it when the build plate is hot or the part is hot. Um, we want to make sure that they're completely cool and you want to bend your flexi plate to release the part. You don't want to pry with a, um, a spatula. You don't want to pull the part up. If you're doing that, you're really risking pulling up chunks of the PEX. Um, so make sure the part is completely cooled as well as the flexi plate and flex to get it off. If it needs to, you take two or three different angles and directions to flex it. And I'll show you a couple examples real soon. Um, another really important thing to think about is filament composition. Every manufacturer makes their filament secret formula that they don't tell anybody what goes into it. There are additives they put in there to make it um, less hydroscopic, not absorb water from the air too much, or to make it more flexible and less brittle, or to make it shinier and more beautiful. Uh, there, there's so many different additives they can add to it, and they don't tell the world what's in it. That's their secret formula. They certainly don't tell Wham Bam about it. And those additives can create bonding. As a matter of fact, just to tell you a little short story, there is a brand of uh, PTG filament that I love, that I used quite a bit and had no problems at all. And within that same manufacturer's PTG range, I switched colors. I put on a different color filament that I hadn't tested of theirs before. And I had bonding to my PEX and it destroyed a little bit the PEX. So I called up the manufacturer and said, is this even possible? He says, as a matter of fact, that color there has a different component in it we put in to enhance its aesthetic uh, beauty in that color. And uh, that will definitely create more bonding with your PEX. So you not only have to be wary of different filament manufacturers, but even of different colors and compositions. The last thing to think about is part geometry. So the larger the part, the larger the part, the more it's going to shrink. Every polymer, when it heats up and becomes liquid, it expands. And when it cools down and becomes solid, it shrinks. Um, if it's a small part, that percentage, let's say it's a 3%, and it's a small part, it's only going to shrink 0.1 millimeter, something very negligible. If it's a very large part, it could even shrink a whole millimeter in its length. If a part shrinks, it's either going to pull itself off the build plate and curl up. That's why you have a lot of warping in big parts. Or it might even pull the build plate up. Or if it manages to grip to the build plate, like PTG will do with PEX, and it's shrunk on there, it's grabbing into the pores and just kind of gripping with its talons and getting smaller. So it's really, really gripping on there. So what can you do about it? Well, the first thing we would recommend is change the delta between the hot end and the cooling. So Instead of going super hot, lower that hot end a little bit so it does not have a drastic change until it cools. Don't go up to the 270 degree point. Go to the 245, the 240. Uh, the second thing you can do is cool the bed slower so it has more time to kind of relax and find its position rather than cool immediately. So an enclosed printer helps. Keeping the bed temperature warm enough will help. Um, the third thing you might want to do is Print it on a raft where you're actually printing the raft at a lower temperature range so it does not want to bond. And then you could raise the temperature for higher speed of your part. And the last, maybe reorient your part. Either turn it on its side, print it up on supports, or hollow it out so you don't have a giant mass all in contact with the bed. Um, these are all different factors which can contribute to bonding to the PEX. We consider our PEX a consumable. Any build surface is. It depends on how the user treats it, what the materials they throw at it, their print settings, their slicer settings, their, pr their printer. We have no control over this as well as any other build surface manufacturer. So it's up to you to be wary of this and to control your settings. So first of all, when in doubt, use glue stick. <laughs> 
Glue stick, we don't need to make it stick to the build surface. Glue stick acts as a barrier layer. Glue stick will prevent the molecular structure of one from bonding with the other one. So we can use glue stick as a barrier layer, and I'll show you some examples on prints where I purposely make it stick to one side without glue stick, and the other side with glue stick, it'll pop off. The beauty of glue stick is it will wash off with just soap and water. I'll show you that. We'll bring one to the sink. This Elmer's Blue Glue Stick is great. The um, Magigoo is great. There's plenty of different brands that really work. Um, if you want to print without glue stick, I highly recommend printing a test print in the corner with the exact filament and settings you're planning on using. That way, if you get any bonding, you have the chance to adjust your settings, print in another corner, try it somewhere else, until you're really sure that that filament with those settings is not going to bond to the PEX. And in that case, go ahead and print um, without glue stick. Just give it a few tests and work your way around it. I hope this all helps. I'm going to show you guys some examples of us flexing off parts and seeing where we have issues and where we don't. By the way, it is possible that, especially for large parts that are shrinking, that as they pull the surface of the PX, they create some bubbles underneath the PX. And those are not permanent. You won't even feel them raised. It's just the fact that it's pulled that glue, and over time and heat and dissipation, those bubbles are just going to disappear. What we don't want is we don't want surface chipping. Very small surface scuffs are no problem as long as you're hitting it with either steel wool or the um, red scotch bright between every print for a couple of seconds. I usually do about 10 seconds, wash with isopropyl alcohol and fresh paper towel. This keeps my flexi plate um, contaminant free and it also buffs the top layer, takes off any testimonial from the print before that. So without further ado, let's get to releasing a few prints and seeing how it goes. Okay, here's the flexi factories. Um, Astronaut, pretty cool print out of a uh, Polymaker PTG. This is a heavy print. I think we didn't hollow it out very much. Um, there's a high probability that had a big amount of mass and it will want to bond. No glue stick was used. Let's try to break that thing off. <coughs> As I'm flexing it, the joints of the flexi model are moving. I feel it popped off on its own and I can lift it up. You can see how gorgeous the back of this is. G, and our happy little astronaut is ready to be relieved of his supports and brought into action. Okay, this is the Prusament PTG Red Carmine. This is the same as we printed this um, beautiful tilt holder for the Saturn II. Um, and we printed a rocket ship in vase mode. Let's see how this goes. It doesn't have very much bottom contact area. It held real well. Let's try to pop that off without breaking the layer lines of the print. There we go. Wow. Look at the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. Super, super light and thin. Very much the opposite of our, our Mr. Spaceman. We've got a, a vase layer PETG and a heavy spaceman and let's have a look at the print bed really beautiful this piece just pulls off be careful of um filament getting under your fingernails is no worse torture than that it's a very cool radius gauge um once again printed with the prusa uh, ptg i like this material very much it's a uh, very accurate not not stringy, I, I love it. Um, and this has a, a large surface area, so it's gonna tend to want to bond as it's shrinking down. I wanna flex this gently. Oh, and it already came off. No damage to the surface. Look at the bottom side of this, it's just gorgeous. Um, and once again, it's gonna clean up really quickly. Okay, so here's another one that I really pushed way beyond its own realm. Once again, this is another Green Gate Recycled PETG. It's a beautiful color when you print it nicely, but I wanted it to bond. So I got it up to 270 degrees, well past its suggested. It's usually about 250, 255. This is, was printed at 270, 
and you can see how squished that first layer is, which I told you we don't want to do. I had the bed at 70, first layer really squished down. The reason I did this is I wanted to see if the glue stick's going to work as a release agent. So the glue stick is the right side. You can see it's shiny on the surface and the no glue stick is the left side. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, these are really on there. I'm going to try to flex first the left one off with no glue stick. You don't want to pull like that. And it definitely damaged the surface. The bottom doesn't look too bad, but we got some chipping. Let's try with the glue stick. There we go. That did not damage the surface at all. What we're seeing here is the glue stick itself. And we're going to take that to the sink and wash it off in a minute. And I'll let you see how it works. The beauty of the glue stick is it washes off with hot water. So we are going to wash it off the bottom of our print as well as the plate. And I'll show you how nicely that works. When in doubt, use the glue stick as your barrier. This is the true proof of it. People are, don't want to use glue stick because they say they bought the wham bam so they don't have to. Well, that's true with so many different materials, but not with PTG. Sometimes you just don't want to risk tearing up your build surface. So use the glue stick.